it's Friday night, and it's a, a particularly interesting time of the year. We here at Love Gospel Assembly have just come through anniversary, and we are on our way into the holidays, or as we say, the holy days. This is an interesting time of the year because God is pulling at us. He's tugging at us because he has some things that he wants to do. In the earth, there's some things he wants to do. In our lives, there are some things he wants to do. And he's pulling us, not so much from our heart, Elder Rosa, not so much all emotional, but from our very center. He's drawing us to himself. He's pulling us to himself because there's some things he wants to clean up in us. Everybody has one or two things that God has been tapping us on the shoulder about. And while he's very patient, he's also very persistent sometimes even relentless until we come to the place where we surrender and we give him our hearts, our lives, and we are willing to be humble so that he can give to us the purpose for which we were born. So will you come with me? Let's just take some downtime and surrender to our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We take this time and recognize who you are. You are our everything. And so we come.
If at the altars where you'll meet me, take me there, take me there. If what you need is just an offering, I'm right here, my life is here, and I'll be Take what you desire, God. I want to be tried by fire, purified. You take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. I want to be tried by fire. Purified. You take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. If your glory wants to come in, let it fall. We want it all. Your fire is consuming. Fill this place. Set it ablaze and I'll be your living sacrifice for you. You're a fire, the refiner. ourselves to you, each and every part of ourselves to you. You made us, you created us, you know how we're made and what we're made for. Prepare us in this time. 
Get us ready for you, God. Get us ready for your purpose. We surrender. We surrender. Clean my hands. Purify my heart. I want to burn for you. Oh, to be consumed with
You are a fire, more love, more power, more of you in my life. I want to be consumed, more love, more power.
conform me to your image, mold me and shape me. Others will see you instead of me, more like you. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. You opened my eyes, let me see beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with.
is now beside you. And in this beautiful, sweet, glorious presence of the Lord, we want to open up our spirit and hear the word of the Lord as he comes to us through a chosen vessel who has a gentle, sweet, tender heart, but also a, a confidence, an occurrence, courage, and assurance because she hears the voice of her master and her Lord, and she obeys what he says. And she shares with us what she hears, that we also may hear and believe and obey and find pleasure in his eyes by choosing what pleases him. I introduce to you Elder Rosa Powell Brown. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor David. Thank you, all the laborers and God that is working to enable me to have the privilege and the honor of lifting up the mighty name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. I thank God for the eldership of this house, Bishop Ron, Lady Dorothy. I thank God for our senior pastor, Jeffrey Williams, and Lady Carmen, and all the others who have labored before us in this house, in the great vision of this house. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, and we bring before you our desire to look like you. It is, Father God, a season and a time in this earth where we need to see more of you. The world needs to see more of you. So tonight, from your word, with a privilege and an honor to do so, it is mirror, mirror on the wall. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of one all. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest one of all? Genesis chapter 1, 
verses 27 and 28. Then, 26 and 27, then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the create creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. Hallelujah. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest one of all? So God created mankind in his own image. image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. He created them. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest one of all? On the wall, who's the fairest one of all? Hallelujah. God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest one of all? Mirror images. Now this phrase, phrase comes from the Brothers Grimm's fairy tale, Snow White. Many of us, as older generation, knows this fairy tale, and we use that phrase many times as we're preparing ourselves on for the outer appearance. So in this fairy tale, there was an evil queen stepmother. Snow White, the main character, was the stepdaughter of the queen. And every day, the queen would go to the mirror on the wall and she would ask that question. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest one of all? And the mirror would give her a response. Queen, oh queen, thou art the fairest in the land. The mirror gave a response to her question of who's the fairest one of all. Now, over the days, weeks, months, she consistently stood before the mirror and she would ask that same question. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest one of all? And the mirror would continue to repeat his same statement or its own same statement. Thou, O queen, art the fairest in the land. Now the stepdaughter, Snow White, continued to grow. And as she grew, she became beautiful in her physical 
appearance until one day the mirror took a look at Snow White. And when the evil queen stepmother came before the mirror that day, the mirror gave a different response. The mirror said, Snow White, O oh queen, is the fairest of them all. Seemingly, truth won out. The mirror on the wall was completely tired of having to repeat the same thing and to see the same thing going on in the palace. The queen did not treat Snow White as a daughter of her flesh, but as the stepdaughter. So when the mirror replied, oh queen, Snow White, is the fairest of them all. Snow White, the evil queen said, and she became so angry, she threw an object and hit the mirror, and the mirror cracked. But it didn't shatter. It stayed together on that wall. Snow White had become a beautiful young lady, and in her becoming, a beautiful young lady. Hearing this, the stepmother, evil queen, attempted to make Snow White's life a living hell. From that point on, thank you for allowing me to use that expression, a living hell. Read the fairy tale and learn the details of how the main character, Snow White, overcame the plots and the schemes of the evil queen stepmother to destroy her. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest one of all? There existed within mankind a quest to project an image or reflection of inner strength, beauty, fame, power. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest one of all? At one time, that was our life's question because we wanted to go after physical beauty. We wanted to go and project to the world an inner strength. We wanted fame. We wanted power. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 4, the apostle Paul writes, the God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of God who is the image of God. As believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we know that Jesus is the one that we're supposed to be following after. We're supposed to allow the Holy Spirit to continue to work with us and to groom us that in appearance, in our walk, in our talk, we look like Jesus. We look at like the image of Christ Jesus, our Lord. But Paul also wants us not to become pompous as believers because he writes in Ephesians 5, chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. For you, I, were once in darkness, but now you, I, are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. It is by God's mercy and grace that we have been given the honor and the privilege to live and work in displaying a different image to the world and in the world. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest one of all? 
With the Old Testament, we read of a specific use for mirrors. Exodus 8, 38 and 8 reports that God spoke and made and told Moses and the priests to build him a brazen altar, a brazen altar. And that was one of the furnishings within the courtyard of the temple. But they also was to make a bronze basin. And its bronze basin stands from the mirrors of the woman who served at the entrance to the tent of the, of the tabernacle. Now, and this is exactly God's words from Exodus 38, verse 8. They made the bronze basin and its bronze stand from the mirrors of the women who served at the entrance to the tent of meeting. So here's the women at the entrance to the tent of meeting. And they have their mirrors. But God requested of them, give up your mirrors for the use of the temple. And they did. Question, what was the bronze basin and why were mirrors inserted in it and on its stand? So let's turn back, a turn forward in the book of Exodus to go back to the chapters before 38. And in chapter 30 of Exodus, verses 17 through 21, it reads, then the Lord said to Moses, make a bronze basin with its bronze stand for washing. Place it between the tent of meeting and the altar and pour water in it. Aaron and his sons are to wash their hands and feet with water from it. Whenever they enter the tent of meeting, they shall wash with water so that they will not die. Also, when they approach the altar to minister by presenting a food offering to the Lord, they shall wash their hands and feet so that they will not die. This is to be a lasting ordinance for Aaron and his descendants from generations to come, from and for the generations to come. Thus, the bronze basin was a tub, or they sometimes in different versions of the Bible, you see, read the word laver. But it was a tub a pail, or a pail in the courtyard of the tent of meeting or the tabernacle. But then when the temple was built, they also had to have a bronze altar in the courtyard of it also. As the scripture says, the basin was filled with water for the priests to wash their hands and their feet with before entering to do service inside the temple. Such as lighting the incense, refueling the lamp to ensure that it never goes out, and offering up the sacrifice. It was important for the priest Aaron and his sons and the priesthood to follow, to make sure they wash their hands and their feet before going into the temple. They had to do this, and it is believed that the basin was large enough that the priest was able to immerse their entire body in it, but God only required for them to wash their hands and their feet. And as they did this, as we have said, that the women gave to them their mirrors. Now, the mirrors that they used during that day were not the mirror of glass that we use, but it was fine, polished metal that when they looked into it, they saw their reflection. So God had Moses to build the bronze altar. And this altar on the inside had these reflecting mirrors on the inside. 
and the stand that it stood on in the courtyard also had the reflecting mirrors upon it. Why did God require that? Because the washings were symbolic rituals of being cleansed before God. What we know today as being washed and cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus himself, that allows us to enter into a relationship with God because we've been cleansed by his blood. Once we receive him as Lord and Savior, we confess that he is our Lord, that he arose from the grave. Then we are washed by his blood because of our faith and belief. Mirror, mirror on the wall. In the bronze basin, we saw or understand, many theologians believe, that the purpose of that, because the word of God really don't tell us, but they believe, and I kind of believe along with them, that when the priest approached the bronze basin, they saw their spiritually imperfect flaws of being human, that they and we no longer reflected that image God created us in. Spiritual flaws, we live and we exist with spiritual flaws. And it was also to show the world at large, those who stood there and watched the priests prepare themselves, that they were flawed also. And this is a cleansing that God requires. And he continues to require it of us in this day and time. Not that we have to go to a basin and wash our hands and feet and see our reflection. But because of the shed blood of Christ Jesus, he requires us to live, to breathe, and to exhibit his image. That's where the washing of the hand and the feet comes in. So as the mirror reflected the priest's spiritual flaws, they were to instruct the people as they prepared and kept all of the instruments of the furniture in the courtyard of the temple in perfect order as they offered up the sacrifice of the Lord, the priest that had to keep the oil and the fuel in the lamps to keep them burning day and night, the altar that they had to sacrifice on, the animals, the bulls, the goats that they had to sacrifice on. They had to make sure that the people saw this and they did it with clean hand and clean feet so that God could be glorified, that the God of Israel was before them, and that this symbolic ritual was to help the people to be able to enter into God's presence when he came down and revealed himself to them. Have we looked into the mirror of God's word today? The mirror of God's word. Or have we been looking into the world's mirror, which are distorted, cracked images and reflections of life. From the world's mirrors, that is what we see. Distortion, many type of cracked individuals. And at one time, as Paul said, we also were like that. But thank God, thank God, for his mirror, his word. The reflections and images that we see in the world's mirror shows fear, hunger, poverty, racism, immorality, the disunity of mankind that leads to war. We see the taking of a life. We see uh, all kinds of abuse, addictions, and the world consistently holds the mirror up for us to look into. 
and to order our steps according to the images that we see in the world's mirror. But as we grow in our faith and belief in Christ Jesus, we learn to hold up God's mirror to identify who we are and what we are to do. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest one of all? The world mirrors also tends to bring the believer into his images and reflections at times. We, as the children of God, as Paul says that we have to live as the children of light, we can't allow the world's mirror to bring us to that place to dishonor our Lord. Let us ever be so careful that we do not allow the images of this world to entice us. The world mirrors wants us to believe that in the midst of all of these flaws of humanity, we are still powerful. We are still beautiful. We are the cream of the crop, that we have it all together. But the preacher in Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 8 states, vanity, vanity, all is vanity because the preacher understood as he had lived his life that everything he went after would be worth nothing once he departed from this earth and it's going to be the same for us if we try to live according to the world's mirror we're going to lose it all and we're going to lose a relationship with Christ Jesus our Lord. We're going to lose that opportunity, that privilege, that honor to live eternally with our Lord. We're going to lose that privilege to be in the congregation of the believers around God's throne. So please don't allow the mirrors of the world to entice you. Colossians verse 1 and 15 states, the sun is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Paul is helping us to understand that Jesus was there at creation because God stated, let us make man in our own image. So Jesus understood the flaws of mankind, but yet he came to give his life that we may be washed, cleansed in his perfect blood. And whose mirror did Jesus use as a man when he walked in flesh on the earth? He used God's mirror. He completely stated again and again, it is written. It is written. It is written. God's word, our mirror. We must use God's word as Jesus did when the world's mirror wants to get in our face. When we hear the politicians say, I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to do that for you. That's the world's mirror enticing us. When we see that it's okay to cohabitate without the bonds of marriage, that's the world's mirror calling out to us. That's the image that it wants to project, that everything that's in direct opposition of the mirror of God is okay. But we know it's not. We know it's not. Because God's mirror, his word, shows us actually who we are, a flawed people, and who he is, a loving father who knows our spiritual flaws, yet he loves us anyway. And he pours out his mercy and grace. 
as we move on into the New Testament in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, which we know or have been called the love chapter. And in verse 12 of 1 Corinthians 13, it states, for now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. God's reflecting mirror to help us to see our flaws and to correct them. Never let us forget that the Holy Spirit gives us spiritual sight and strength to pull away from the world's mirror so that we could see the newly created one, you and me, in God's mirror. That when we look into God's mirror, we are a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And then we look at Brother James, Apostle James, on the application of God's word. And he says in chapter 1, verses 22 through 25, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever look intently into the perfect law that gives freedoms continues in it not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it so they will be blessed in what they do. God's mirror is in direct opposition to the world. God's mirror, let me give you a few descriptive details about God's mirror. God's mirror is a mirror of compassion, concern, comfort. God's mirror is, helps us to become completely clothed in his righteousness. It is a mirror of communication and endearing conversations that are never ending. God loves to banter back and forth with us. He tells us endearing stories of love over the generations and that love that will never depart from him because he is love. And when we reflect God's love, we become like Jesus. Hallelujah. Whose mirror are we looking into? God's mirror is also a mirror of coming alongside of others to be God's extended hands and feet in the earth in service to the gospel message. Whose mirror are we looking into? The one on the wall that tells us what we want to see or hear or the mirror that expresses, then corrects with love as its foundation. Just as we have to learn to shut out the world's noise, we also have to learn to sh block out of our sight, the world's flawed reflections are images of life. Block it out. Look into God's word that, that we may grow thereby and reflect God's image in the earth. Since we were created in God's image, then let us use God's mirror, his word, Jesus' example, and the Holy Spirit's guidance and direction as our mirror. Then we will be able to shine forth in this world as reflectors of his image. And God said, let us create mankind in our image. Let us create them, male and female, in our image. God's image, God's image, not the world's 
image. We have been called apart, set aside for the glory of God. And we must display his image. We must do that as we're going about our daily task, in our home, on our job, as we walk in our community. Just let the light of shine, of Christ shine within us. Let it exude from us that those who pass us by will want to know who is that person. What is it that they have? They have a glow about them. That's the light of Christ because you've been looking into God's mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall, whose love is the greatest love of all. Christ Jesus, our Lord, the image of his life, his works of what we are to be striving after. Not the world's image, but the image of the almighty God, the almighty Savior, the almighty Holy Spirit to be filled from top to bottom because we no longer have to wash our hands and our feet with water, that liquid that we use to cleanse this outer appearance. And we drink to satisfy the thirst that we may have inside. But now God is telling us to go deeper, go deeper, go deeper. Wash your hands and your feet. And when we approach the tabernacle, we should come in already washed by repenting of what we may have done that does not display God's honor by what we've said that does dis not display God's word, by what we do. Have I reached out to my brother, my sister, who may be hurting? Have I reached out to the world at large to share the gospel message? God's mirror, not the world's mirror. God's mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Whose love is the greatest love of all? This mirror that I should have in my heart, in my mind, and it should be my guiding factor to live a life of honor before God and before man. So we can ask ourselves that question. Mirror, mirror on the walls. Whose greatest love? is the greatest love of all. And we bow before the mirror of Christ Jesus, the image of God our Father, and the Holy Spirit who grooms us to be just like them. Because he created us in his image. So let's live the image of Christ Jesus as his church. God bless, God bless, and remember when you're looking in the mirror, when I'm looking in the mirror, I need to see God's image. And I can proclaim to the world that God's love is the greatest love of all. God bless. Thank you, thank you, thank you for staying tuned in today. Did you enjoy today's message? I pray that you did. And I also pray that your relationship with God is growing by leaps and bounds day by day. Now there's so much more to come, so I want you to be sure to like, follow, and share us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Just type in Love Gospel Assembly, and I'm sure you will be blessed by what you hear and see. And in the meantime, be sure to ring that subscribe bell 
you won't want to miss all that's coming up. So have a blessing.